In this video, we're going to talk about throwing your own exceptions. Now, why would you ever want to do this and what does that even mean? So if you're confused about exceptions in general, you need to go back and watch the previous video, which was an exceptions, uh, catching exceptions video. Exceptions generally happen when something that um, has gone wrong in the code. And the things that we covered in the last video were things that the compiler or the runtime environment know are wrong. For example, you tried to divide by zero, which is not legal. That's something that is inherently in there. But there are times in your code where you might want to throw an exception about something that isn't technically um, syntactically wrong, or it's not illegal, but it may be something that you didn't want to allow to happen. And so we're going to take an example of this here in um, this lecture, and we're going to talk about a bank account. Um, obviously, there are times in a bank account where the user can attempt to do things that they shouldn't be allowed to do. And in those types of circumstances, what's going to happen is we're going to throw a exception, which is what's going on here on the screen. Um, you can throw any kind of exception you want. Throw is a new keyword that we haven't talked about before, but basically it allows you to say, right now I need you to deal with this exception that has just happened. So let's take a look at, um, ooh, that carried over. Why did that carry over? Go away. Oh, I have done terrible things. Okay, problem solved. Um, all right, so what's going on here is that we have a block of code and in our block of code, we are using this new keyword, um, throw, and you can see it up here at the top. So what we have is a class example, and we have a method do stuff, and the only thing that do stuff does is it throws an exception, which is probably not very useful in the real world, but I just think we're trying to demonstrate something. So because it's an object, you're going to create a new exception, and then the exception has a constructor that takes in a string, and this is called the message, which you can access later on. All right, so in this class example, we have a method do stuff, and that method immediately throws an exception. This is C-sharp code that we're looking at. The Java code is going to be a little bit different, so bear with me, Java folks. But in C-sharp, you simply say throw new exception, and you give it the string of what you want. And then, obviously, if we're going to call do stuff, we're going to need to put a try catch around it like we did before, because we, we expect that it could throw an, ex an exception. So... Um, we're just going to talk through the order in which this works, which should be clear from the previous one, but we begin our main method and it begins a try block where it attempts to do stuff. The do stuff method will be called immediately and it will go up and start working in this uh, block of code up here. The very first thing that happens in here is that it will throw the exception. At this point, execution of this method ceases and anything that's down below that will not happen. As a matter of fact, even the stuff that's down below this will never happen. This line that says this line never prints is true. It actually will never print. Because the moment that the exception happened inside of do stuff, the fact that it's wrapped in a try block means that it's going to go into exception handling. So it's going to go down and look for a catch that matches the exception that happened immediately upon this throw. And indeed, what's going to happen here is that throw is going to match because it is an exception and we threw an exception. So it's going to catch the exception here and it's going to print out exception thrown and the e dot message. Okay, e dot message. Well, the thing that we caught, we called it e, that's the name of the variable. It is of an object of type exception. And there's an attribute in C sharp called message, which is the message that was thrown. So what this is actually going to print out is exception thrown colon CSE1322 because, or CSE1321 for some reason, because that is the exception string that was actually thrown here. All right, and then the finally is going to happen like it always does, so it'll print out this prints no matter what. All right, so just to be clear, this is going to crash this block of code because here I threw an exception inside of do stuff but I didn't wrap this in a try catch. So because there's no try catch, the exception happens. This will successfully throw an exception and any exception, if it is not caught, will cause the program to crash. So the moment that that exception is thrown, you will get a crash from this program because you did not wrap this in try catch. And if you need more details on that, watch the try catch video. All right, so let's talk about the Java folks. What's different over there? Well, there's another keyword that you need to be aware of. In addition to the throw keyword, which works the same, in Java, you also need to know the throws keyword, the plural version of it. 
So anytime you have a method that could throw an exception, you have to state in the method header that it throws this exception type, and you have to specify what it is. There can be more than one, and they would be separated by commas. You need to understand the difference between throw and throws, because this is a common interview question that you will get. Explain the difference between the keyword throw and throws. The answer to that question is a method must be declared to throws an exception, i.e. at the end of the method header, it will say throws file IO exception. The throw keyword is what actually causes the code to go and throw that at that moment. So let's take a look at this in our code. So this is the same code we looked at from the C sharp folks, but this is the Java version of it. And really, most of this is the same. It's still a method do stuff that still throws a new exception of CSE 1321. The difference in Java is this bit. The method header has to have throws exception because you are throwing an exception. If you're throwing more than one type of exception, like a file IO exemption, or a index out of bounds, or a divide by zero arithmetic exception, they can all be listed here after commas. So it might say throws exception, comma, IO exception, comma, arithmetic exception, or whatever. All right, so all the different kinds of exceptions are listed. And then other than that, this has the try and the catch just like before. The equivalent down here, it's not written on this slide, but it is e dot get message, G-E-T, capital M-E-S-S-A-G-E, -S -S -E, open print, close print, because it's a method um, in Java. The exception object has a method called get exception. And you're going to see that in my example code that I'm going to show you. Um, just like in C Sharp, this will cause a compile time error because you are throwing an exception, but you're not catching it. Okay, so let me be clear. In C Sharp, if you have an exception, but you don't catch it, then C Sharp will crash at the time that you get there. In Java, the compiler won't even let you run. The compiler says you need to have a try catch because this method is declared as throwing an exception. Therefore, you need to catch the exception. It requires you to do that in the compiler. All right, so we're going to jump out. I'm going to come back to that slide in just a moment. So over here in um, this Java window, and I have it in both Java and C Sharp. This particular um, replet in my account is going to be CSE 1322 throwing dash exceptions dash Java or dash C Sharp. Again, the dash one is just because I want to be able to code it here. There's a finalized version that has the code correct uh, without the dash one. All right. So what I did is I created an object called bank and I just set up a little bank account basically. So what we have is we have a next account number, which is going to be my account number. Every account is going to get an account number, and they're going to start at 1,000, and this is a static variable, so that means that it is going to be shared across all banks um, or all objects of this type bank. And then I have a account number, which is an integer that's going to be unique in each one of them inside of my constructor, as we typically do with these types of things. I'm setting the account number to be the next account number plus plus. So I'm setting the non-static variable to be the static variable. And I'm setting my balance, which is a double, to be zero. Okay. And then I just have three methods. Deposit, which takes in an amount and adds it to the balance. Withdrawal, which takes in an amount and subtracts it from the balance. And check balance, which returns the balance. Okay, so that is the Java code. If we go over and we look at the C-sharp code, that looks pretty much exactly the same. Um, as a matter of fact, I think it is literally exactly the same. I don't think there's any changes in there. All right, so then we're going to go down and we're going to look at our mains in both cases. And so what I'm doing is I am going to make an object of type bank, what I called it bank of enda. So bank of enda is a new uh, variable, uh, is of type bank, and it gets a new bank on it. Um, I'm then going to say bankavenda.deposit $100.25, and I'm going to print out the current balance, and that's done by calling the check balance method inside of my print statement, which hopefully that makes sense. Then I'm going to do a withdrawal of $200, and I'm going to try and print out the balance. Now, um, you can see very clearly that if I run both of these codes, um, something weird is going to happen. It is going to deposit $100.25. It's going to print out that my balance is $100.25. And then it's going to let me withdraw $200. This is a very, very generous bank. And you should immediately set up business with them. Although it won't be called the Bank of Enda. Because I'm not giving you all $100. All right. So in both of these cases, it allowed the balance to go down below zero. And logically, an integer can certainly hold lower than 
zero. So there's no code problem here, but there is a logic problem. The bank won't actually let you do that withdrawal. So we need to add some code in here to stop the user from doing that withdrawal. So down here inside of my withdrawal method, I'm going to say um, if the balance minus the amount is less than zero, then we are going to throw new exception insufficient funds. All right, as simple as that. So I threw a new exception, insufficient funds. Now, if we try to compile and run this, um, and I try to do that withdrawal, you can see immediately it starts actually crashing with insufficient funds. Now, crashing is probably not what I wanted it to do. Probably what I should have done is at the moment I try to do withdrawal, I should probably say try, and then I should catch exception, call it E, and say, uh, what am I in? This is C sharp console.write line. And I, I could actually just say e dot message, and that will happily print out the message that we got. All right, so we're going to run this again. So now when the withdrawal attempts to happen, you can see I get insufficient funds. And then when I print out my balance, you can also see that it did not withdraw the $200. I still have $100 in there. And so that seems much more appropriate. Let's go over to Java real quick and do the same thing here. So this is going to be the same. I'm going to try uh, to do that withdrawal. And I'm going to catch exception um, E. And I'm going to system.out.println um, E.get message, which is how you get the message back in Java. And then the other thing I need to do is over in the bank, I need to actually throw that exception. And as I say, you're going to see here the difference in the syntax. So on my withdrawal, I say if balance minus amount is less than zero, then we are going to throw new exception insufficient funds. Now, this will not work as it currently stands because I am attempting to throw an exception inside of a method that is not declared as allowing exceptions to be thrown. And you can see that the error you get there is unreported exception exemption uh, must be caught or declared to be thrown. So to be clear, this is a Java only thing. In the Java version of this code on this method line, after I specify my parameters, I have to say throws, throws exception. And now, it will work just fine. Okay, that's not necessary in C sharp. As a matter of fact, it doesn't work in C sharp. You don't do it in C sharp, but in Java you must do it. And so now the code works the same in both cases. So to be clear, the reason for this video is to talk about the circumstance where there isn't a actual um, syntactical problem. There isn't actually a mathematical problem. There is a problem that I want to declare. You're trying to withdraw more money than you have in your account. I'm going to throw an exception, and then I'm going to capture that. We've done examples in class where we've tried to do things in an array, and we've tried to sum up the numbers in the array. And at the time, the question was, well, what do you return if there's nothing in the array? Well, if it's sum, the answer is zero. But if you're asking for the average of the array, or the minimum number in the array, or the max number in the array, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I can't just return zero because that's not even in the array. So that's an example where I would throw an exception and let the exception handling code deal with the fact that you have reached this weird circumstance that you wanted the code to be able to handle. So throwing exceptions is done when you have a logical problem that you want to be able to deal with that doesn't involve you returning some magic number from the method, which is not the right way to handle it. The correct way to handle it is that you throw an exception, catch the exception, and do something intelligent in that case. All right, so that is the, um, the throwing exceptions. There's a couple of final thoughts here in the slide, which I'll go over. Um, a common question that you will get, especially in a Java interview, but it also somewhat applies in the C Sharp interview world, is what are the differences between these three words? Because they are all almost identical. Final, finally, and finalize. Okay, so final, as you will remember in Java, is the way that you specify that a variable 
is not changeable. It's effectively a read-only variable is the equivalent in C sharp. So it makes a method or a, makes a variable, an attribute, or a method um, unchangeable. It is final. Finally is the last block in a try catch. And finalize is a method that you can call inside of an object to actually destruct the object. That's not something we've ever really talked about, but constructors inside of objects are obviously what happens when a new object is made. But at the point when an object is being destroyed, you may have some cleanup that you want to do, and that's called finalize, which is your destructor. So those three words come up. This is really a Java point um, in interviews quite often because they are so similar, but they have quite different meanings. So final makes it constant. Finally, try catch block, finalize, cleaning up an object. Um, all right. And that is the end of the lecture about um, throwing exceptions. <laughs>